Good evening. I am sporting my Barbara Boucher inspired makeup today, which is what I just did for the video I filmed last, but I thought while I have appropriate makeup, I should film this video, which is about the Jalo genre. I mentioned it in my what I've been into lately video, but these days I've been watching a lot of Jalo. What is that? Essentially, it's a genre of Italian exploitation films. I found a good definition here, so I'm just going to read it. It's from therap.com. It describes the Jalo as a hyper stylized crime movie that often includes gory murders, erotic themes, and mass killers with black leather gloves. Jalo films are similar to American slasher and exploitation films in the sense that they're often lush, colorful, and even trashy movies that make for howlingly good midnight cinema. I thought that was a pretty good description. The word Jalo translates to yellow, which is the color of the covers of pulp crime fiction novels of the time. I also wanted to define exploitation film because that's the definition that I have also recently been exploring. It's not actually as bad as it sounds. According to Wikipedia, an exploitation film is a film that attempts to succeed financially by exploiting current trends, niche genres, or lurid content. Exploitation films are generally low quality B movies. I mean, that's all I ever want in life. Like, that sounds perfect to me. Jalo is just one of the many subgenres that fall under exploitation films. Some include cannibal films, biker films, slasher films, spaghetti westerns, and there's a lot. So, in conclusion, Jalo refers to the subgenre of Italian exploitation crime movies that are reminiscent of American slasher. I guess American slashes are reminiscent of Jalo, but whatever, you get it. So here I am, new to Jalo, but very, very excited about it. I have a really preliminary impression, preliminary understanding of this world. So forgive me if I miss the mark here or seem naive, it's because I am. I am new to this, but that's why I wanted to make this video now, to mark this moment, to share my excitement, to invite along anyone else who's interested. And for longtime Jalo fans, I, I want to share my perspective of this like person with fresh eyes who's just now diving in. Because it's always fun. I think it's always fun to hear from somebody who's just now getting into something that you're into. So, where did this begin? Well, we all know Dario Argento. I saw Suspiria. And yes, it's debated, I see, on whether Suspiria is Jalo or not. But nonetheless, this was my first exposure to Jalo, and I have my friend Sky to credit for that. I just loved the music. I loved the colors. I loved how gory the deaths were, and I just wanted to know if there was more of this out there. But Jalo also crept into my life from a different direction, too. I saw on Instagram where someone posted a picture of this actress, this actress, I forgot to look up how to spell her name, how to say her name. But I saw her and I thought, I need to watch everything she has ever been in. So the first movie I watched with her was actually Death Laid an Egg, which is a Jalo film. And I remember sitting there thinking like, I just watched an, Ita an entire Italian film, like, in it, with subtitles, but like, in Italian. I was like, who am, what, what is, what am I doing? So yeah, I came at it from like those two angles. And so after I found out Jalo was a thing, I decided to start watching more. I went through Wikipedia's list of Jalo movies. I went through everything and saw what was free on Amazon Prime and put all of those on my watch list. And I've just been watching, like, I start with the 70s. I've seen a few from the 60s and like a couple from the 80s, but I started with the 70s because that's just what I feel most drawn to at this time. And lately I've just been all up in it. And I don't, I don't know if it's, I think I just wanted like a change of scenery, a change of culture, a change of everything. I just wanted to, I just wanted something completely different. And now I have watched approximately 19 Jalo films. I'm in the middle of a 20th, if I'm counting correctly. So in this video, I just wanted to talk about like the things I have noticed, the things that stand out to me about Jalo films. 
the reason I love Jalo is like for the same reasons that it's similar to American slashers, like the horror kind of aspect. But since Jalo does involve like crime, theme of crime in general, there's a lot of it's there's a lot of like cop and detective movies and like mystery movies and some that just seem like almost like action movies. So from what I can tell, it's a really broad genre. And I'm definitely more drawn to like the darker, more horror, like even some of them have supernatural themes, like that's what I'm drawn to. So here's what I've noticed so far about the giallo genre. I need to say giallo, not giallo. Whatever, forgive me. Number one, the gore, the blood. The blood is so extra. It's so red, it's so deep. Like I know it doesn't look like real blood, but I love it so much. It's so loud and just like attention grabbing. And um, it's almost like stage blood or something. And I just love that. And the, the deaths and the gore and like the create, they're so creative. The way that people die and like the accidents that happen to people are just, it's always like, oh my God. And I love that. I love being shocked like that. The architecture and the fashion, what you're seeing visually, the architecture in these films, these buildings are grand and they're big and they're beautiful. And I just, I love that, that grandeur that we're seeing in Italy and the other countries where these are being filmed. It's beautiful. And the clothes are exquisite. I love the fashion. Right now, I'm like I said, I'm mostly in the 70s. So I love the hair, the makeup, and the clothes they choose to wear. It's just wonderful. And a lot of these films are focused on fashion. Like they take place, like one's in a fashion house, one's involving models, like fashion definitely plays a part. The way these people talk, their mannerisms, like, I don't know. There's just something about the way they talk that's different. Maybe it's because a lot of it's dubbed, but I love the sound of their voices and the way they say things and, and how their mannerisms are just, it's theatrical, I suppose. Oh, and their screams. Their screams are just like nothing else. They're so extra. The cinematography, of course, is definitely something that anyone will probably note about Jalo films. I love the close-ups, um, the, the lighting, the way, especially like colorful lighting. I'm so into it. They just take time to be artistic and I feel like a lot of movies are void of artistic experimental cinematography. And that's really what I enjoy. Another thing that I've noticed in all of these movies is there is a twist. There's a surprise. You're going to get caught off guard. You're going to get shocked. There, there's going to be something you never saw coming. I, I get to the point where I'm like, I know I'm about to be, to be surprised right now, but I don't know how. These people in these movies are unbelievably beautiful. I am shocked and amazed and stunned. I love the way they cast these movies because I feel like especially nowadays in America, if you're, you're either casting a familiar face because they're a familiar face, you know, a well-known actor, or if you're casting an unknown, they usually look a little more homely, like a little more relatable, which I like that too. But something about these gorgeous people in these Jalo films is just, it just adds to the aesthetic, you know? And luckily for me, many of these Jalo goddesses appear in more than one of these films. So we have people like Iwa, maybe? Is that how you say it? Edviga? Oh no, I don't want to say these people's names. And Barbara Boucher have all appeared in more than one. And I am, I love seeing like, oh, it's you again. I'm so glad. Next, another popular theme is sleaze. The sleaze, man. There's a lot of like porno fantasy type of scenarios, like things that would never happen in real life that are happening in these films. A lot of nudity. And I guess that caught me off guard because Argento, doesn't really do that as far as I remember. So I wasn't getting that from Argento. And then like the rest of Giallo just has nudity everywhere. <laughs> and the Italians do nudity in a different way. Maybe I'm not watching the right American movies, but comparatively, these Italian movies have like extended nudity. Americans, it seems like they just like to give you a little, a little peep. And then Italians, they're just like walking around the room. <laughs> for a whole scene with no clothes on. Um, it, it was surprising at first. I don't usually go for films that have gratuitous sex, but 
I'm getting used to it. Going off of that, another theme I want to talk about is misogyny. I, I can't, I mean, I've seen people talking about it. Is, is this misogynistic at its core? I don't, I don't know, but I think, you know, having awareness to be able to look for that as a woman is important. But I think ultimately, if this, just being open to this film, and at the end is this film something that I enjoy, then I think that's all I need to know. But you know, you do wonder if this, if these movies are just about like stabbing beautiful women, what, what is that saying? I'm not sure, but I just think these films have so much feminine energy in them. And I don't think it's necessarily, you know, from a place of hate. I think it's more from a place of appreciation. Um, this is definitely a female, a, a feminine driven genre. I haven't seen any of these films that's not starring a woman. So I don't know. Yeah, she might get stabbed, but I see it as it's embracing the feminine. If in a um, kind of morbid way. And there is some assault content in these films, but it's every time I've seen it, it's like implied, like they don't actually show the scene taking place. And I do appreciate that because I don't like movies with assault in them. Next, I do want to talk about racism. There is something that I noticed. I watched three Jalo films now that featured a black actress and I've been like, okay, great. But almost immediately, the racist remarks, the racist dialogue begins, and it does not end until that per that character is killed. It's hard for me to understand why they put r this racist dialogue, these racist comments in the script. Is it to accentuate the unlikable nature of the characters who are saying these things? Or is it a reflection of the time and in place. Like, am I supposed to be enjoying this? And again, we also have this like culture barrier. I'm in America in 2021 and they're in Italy in 1972. And I, yeah, I'm just, I don't understand why that's in there and what, what it's supposed to, what its purpose is to have the racist comments const constant surrounding these characters. And finally, the last thing I wanted to mention about these Jalo films is the titles are fantastic. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, I love reading the list on Wikipedia of all the Jalos. Or, I'm sorry, it's Jolly. Apparently that's the plural, but I don't... <sighs> Whatever. So last, I just wanted to run through the list of the films I have watched so far. I believe all of these are currently free on Amazon Prime if you want to give any of them a watch. Wait, not Suspiria though. Suspiria is the first. Death Laid an Egg. Shock. A Blade in the Dark. Phenomena. Opera. Deep Red. Blood and Black Lace. Death Smiles on a Murderer. Nightmare Castle. Suspicious Death of a Miner. I should read it. I should read it like, Case of the Bloody Iris. The Red Queen kills seven times. What have you done to Solange? The killer reserved nine seats. Your vice is a locked room and only I have the key. Plot of fear. Don't torture a duckling. And finally, the bloodstained butterfly. And the one I'm watching right now is Black Belly of the Tarantula. I had to stop midway. So that has been my journey. That's been my journey so far. I want to tell you which ones are my favorite. Suspiria, Phenomena, A Blade in the Dark. Girl, you need to watch that if you haven't yet. The Case of the Bloody Iris, The Red Queen Kills Seven Times, and What Have You Done to Solange is so messed up. And, I, you know, your vice is a locked room and only I have the key was uncomfortable. It was weird. It was messed up, but I can't forget about it. Like, why am I still thinking about it? I don't know. So I don't want to say it's my favorite, but I would say it's very significant. Oh, I just talked a lot about movies, but I hope somebody liked this. If you have 
a number one Jello film you want to recommend, please do. I hope to make my way through all of them eventually. I'm having a great time. And my makeup is inspired by Barbara Boucher's role in Don't Torture a Duckling. <laughs> and that's it, all we have. So if you want to chat exploitation films, if you want to chat about Jalo or anything, I love to see it. All right, that concludes today's video. Ciao. <laughs>